I am going to teach you five ways to stop caring what other people think of you. And this is seriously going to liberate you and change your life. If you're like most people that I meet and work with, there is something that's happening inside your head that is really holding you back. And I know because this used to be me too. This was something that kept me stuck for a very long time. And it was only once I learned how to move past this that I was able to achieve the things that I truly wanted to achieve in life. So this is the problem. You're worrying too much about what people think about you. And that's what I'm gonna talk to you about in the next several minutes. I am going to teach you five ways to stop caring what other people think of you. And this is seriously going to liberate you and change your life. This is a huge problem for so many people. The reason why it's a problem is because when we worry so much about what other people are thinking about us, it consumes our thoughts and it keeps us stuck and it keeps us in a state of paralysis. For many of us, we can't even think about what to do next because We are so concerned about what family members or friends or neighbors or colleagues are going to think about us. And I want to know if this sounds familiar. Do you invest way too much value into the opinions of other people? Because the truth is, no matter what you do or say or how you act or the decisions that you make, people will always have an opinion of you. And if you put too much stock in that, then you are going to allow other people's opinions to not only control your actions and decisions, but oftentimes to even define you. And clearly that's not good. So let's get into the five ways to stop caring about what other people think of you. So the first thing to do is to realize that people aren't thinking about you as much as you think they are. This is kind of a harsh truth, but it's a truth nonetheless. Not everybody cares that much about you. The fact is people are just too busy worrying about themselves and their own issues to be spending much time thinking about yours. We really overestimate how much time other people spend thinking about us. This is just human nature. So being aware of that overestimation is the first step to liberating yourself. Other people, you know, they've got enough to occupy their minds. They are way too busy thinking about their families and their work and whatever else that they are thinking about to form a detailed opinion about you. It sounds a little cold or harsh, but when you think about it, it's actually liberating, right? Okay, so way number two. Next, I want you to get into reality about the idea that when you are worrying so much about what other people think, what you're doing is you're placing more importance on what they think of you than what you think of you. And I want you to decide if that's how you want to live. The truth is another person's opinion is just that. It's their opinion and that's all it is. So ask yourself, just how much value are you placing on other people's opinions of you? How important is living up to your own standards to you? Honestly, the only opinion that should really matter to you is yours. By allowing other people's opinions to influence and dominate your life, you are surrendering your own power and agency. So I want you to ask yourself, who do you want to be? What do you want? What choices are you making? And are you making those choices for other people or for you? Every time you become upset about something that somebody else thinks of you, What you are really saying in that moment is that what you think of me is more important than what I think of myself. And this isn't to say that you should stop liking approval. We are hardwired for approval and it's a difficult desire to turn off completely. I like approval, of course I do. I love it when you guys hit the like button on my videos or share my content with a friend, hint, hint. But there's a big difference between liking approval and needing approval. The approval of others, it's great for sure, but it's about detaching from needing that. Okay, next up, I want to talk to you about what is going on from a neurological perspective when you are obsessing over what other people are thinking about you. So what's happening is that when you start wondering what another person is thinking about you, you are, you're triggering your mind to search for the answer. It's like when you search your computer's hard drive for something. So your mind is trying to reach out toward the other person's brain and figure out what that other person is thinking about you. And your mind looks for clues and creates a whole bunch of scenarios of what the other person's opinion might be. But the trouble is 
none of these scenarios can actually be confirmed. And because your mind just can't confirm any of these scenarios that it's coming up with, this creates an unfinished request. Your mind computer just can't come up with the answer. So because it's an incomplete request, your mind keeps looking for the answer, but it will never find it. So it won't stop searching. Think about when your computer is running something in the background, like constantly running it. It takes up a lot of bandwidth, right? And other processes maybe start working slower, right? So this is what's happening in your mind because so much of your thinking is still trying to search for that answer about what other people are thinking about us. It's just slowing us down and stopping us from being able to think clearly about what we want, what decisions we want to make and what we want to do. So here's one way to counteract this. Answer your own question. You can literally create a story that the other person loves your new haircut. You can tell your mind that everything is fine. They think you look amazing, even if they don't say it. But secretly, you know, what they're thinking is this, and you don't need to keep wondering about it. I know that this might sound a little crazy, but I really just want you to give it a try. We tell ourselves stories all the time. We attach meaning to things where there isn't any meaning and we make up things about situations constantly. A lot of the time, those made up stories are negative and disempowering. So why not retrain your mind to make up a story that's really good and makes you feel good so you can close that loop and your mind can stop thinking about it. You can just get on with what you need to do. Okay, so the next thing, number four to do is to take a good, honest look at your own self-judgment and self-criticism. Because here's a truth that might blow your mind. Usually other people's judgments of you only affects you if you believe it. Even if just 10% of you believes it, but it's that sneaky feeling that maybe they're right, that's what stings. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, nobody can make you feel inferior without your consent. If somebody says something and they're judging you, you know, for leaving your job, for example, if you know 100% that it's the right thing to do and you couldn't possibly be happier because you're free now and you're thrilled for the next stage of your life and career, then their judgment won't touch you. In fact, you might even feel kind of sorry for them because they just don't get it. And maybe they're still stuck in their own unfulfilling job. But if you you don't feel 100% certain about your decision. If there's still a small part of you that's worried that you're making a mistake, then someone calling out, like coming out of the woodwork to criticize you and judge you for this, it really affects you and it's going to make you question everything. So it's really important to be honest with yourself about what you are judging yourself for. And that is the stuff that you're going to need to deal with. Not somebody else's opinion because we can't control that. But this is the way to break free from those shackles of being affected by other people's thoughts about us. Self-acceptance. When you can embrace all facets of yourself unconditionally and have your own back, then other people's opinions just won't have any power over you. Okay, finally, the final approach that I have for you today is to let people be wrong about you. It's important to accept that not everyone will approve or be on board with you, and that's okay. They're entitled to their opinion, and that opinion might even be completely off base, but it's so important to avoid getting into the energy of trying to explain yourself or making other people understand what you're doing and why. It's not a good use of your time or your energy. Accept that not everyone will like you or approve of you. In life, some people like you and others might not, and that is okay. There is absolutely nobody who gets 100% approval rating. Go on to Amazon right now and look up the Harry Potter books, and you will see a lot of one-star ratings of that book, which to me makes no sense, but that's my opinion. And other people clearly have their own opinion, and they are totally entitled to have that opinion. It's okay. It's easier to detach from other people's one-star rating of a book than, you know, somebody's one-star rating of you, of course, but that's the work. But it's what you need to do to liberate yourself from that prison of just caring too much what other people think of you. As Dita Von Tees said, you can be the ripest, juiciest peach in the world, and there's still going to be somebody who hates peaches. It's not easy to face somebody who has negative views of you, but there will definitely be people who love what you do and will accept 
all of you. There will be people who support you and cheer you on. And these are the people who deserve to walk with you. When it comes to dealing with the people who are just determined to criticize and judge you, you just need to ask yourself, am I living my life for them or for me? Okay, so those are my five ways to stop worrying about what other people are thinking about you so you can get on with doing your amazing work in the world. Realize that people aren't thinking about you as much as they think you are. Number two, realize that you are placing more importance on what they think of you than what you think of you, and that needs to change. Number three is answer your own question, the question of what do people think about me? just to stop that constant brain surge that is sucking all of your bandwidth. Number four is to face your own self-criticism because somebody else's judgment usually only affects you if you believe it, even if you just believe it a little bit. And number five is to let people be wrong about you and accept that not everyone will approve or be on board with you. This is not easy. I talk to clients about this work all the time and none of it is easy, but the more that you can work on all of these strategies, the stronger you will become. And the more you'll be able to detach yourself from allowing your worries about judgment and criticism and scrutiny, you know, and the more free that you will be. When I've asked clients to imagine not worrying what other people think, like ever, what would be possible for them, I watch their eyes light up as they imagine the possibilities because honestly, the possibilities are endless. So I want you to do the same thing. Imagine if it did not matter to you what other people thought. It truly had no effect on you and it did not factor into your decisions in any way. What could you do? What could you achieve and become? Just let that sink in for a minute and then I want you to let me know what came up for you. Did this give you an aha moment? Drop a comment below the video, or of course, if you're listening to the podcast version, find me on Instagram at Dr. Kim Foster and tag me and let me know. Now, if you loved this episode and you want to get more of this kind of thing, then I invite you to sign up for the wait list of my new membership club that is coming very soon. The link is in the show notes or the description box below. And the whole purpose of this membership is to help Help you build and grow your wellness business and strengthen your success mindset, plus give you all the support and the know-how that you're going to need along this journey. There's nothing like having a really amazing, uplifting community to turn to on this entrepreneurial ride because we all need that support. And of course, at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that you need to learn to help you shortcut the path to success. So go ahead and add, add your name to the waitlist so that you will be the first to know when all the details details become available and I begin launching and opening the doors to enrollment. Okay. That is a wrap for today. As always, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Have an amazing week and I will see you again very soon. 